welcome back to the Scrubs Off Duty podcast. I'm Brie, also known as Brie Brie the Nurse. I am so excited that this is my second episode on YouTube. If you didn't catch the last one, I did nursing school horror stories and it was my first video that I ever posted on YouTube of my podcast. And let me tell you, it was a whole adventure. I filmed the whole thing. I spent a ton of time editing it and then it would only export three minutes of it every single time I tried to export it. Tears were shed, it was very, very stressful, but I finally got it uploaded. So I would love your love on it because it took me a lot of time and stress for me to get that out there. It literally wouldn't export because there was one quick like millisecond black flash on the screen and that's why it wouldn't export the rest of it. And when I finally figured that out, I was like, are you serious? I've been messing with this for how many weeks now? Because that little quick flash, that little glitch, really? <laughs> but you know, we live and we learn. I am a nurse, I did not go to like IT school or <laughs> content creation school, like YouTube school. I know nothing about any of this. So please bear with me and I appreciate all of your love and support. But let's get into today's episode. So I wanted to talk about all things night shift. If you don't know, I used to work night shift back in the day <laughs> when I first graduated. I was put on nights like most new grad nurses are. So I thought this was pretty good timing because nursing school is about to wrap up. A lot of you are probably going to be on nights for the first time and I feel your pain. I was on nights and then I hated it. Like to say the least, like I hated it. It was super hard on my body. I thought nights was the problem, but now I'm kind of reevaluating that. I don't know if it's actually the problem or not. Like, it, I don't know. We'll get there. It's a long story. But I switched to days as soon as I could. Like, I was like, please, please, please get me off a of night shift. Constantly asking my manager, like, I need to move to days. And the problem was I was sick every single week. So I was struggling to get through it because I was so sick and it wasn't helping. And I thought just because I didn't know any better that night shift was what was causing my sickness. Now that I'm back on nights, I'm kind of like, hmm, maybe night shift wasn't the problem because I genuinely like night shift. I feel like now I definitely am handling it because I'm back on night shift now. I'm handling it a lot better than I did the first time around. Knock on wood, I'm not even gonna say it, but I've been healthy. And that is so important for me and I'm so, so, so thankful that I'm healthy because it makes it 10 times harder when you're not to get through night shift. There's nothing worse than being sleep deprived, up all night and not feeling well. So I'm so, so, so thankful that I'm not going through that again. I am hopeful that I don't have to go through it again the rest of my contract that I'm on nights for. But I generally really like nights this time around and I feel like I have a good system, I feel like I have a good work-life balance, a good quality of life, and I feel like those weren't things that I had the first time around. So I'm hopeful that I can share some tips with you so you can hopefully have that good work-life balance and quality of life while working night shift because yes, in some ways I do think and there are plenty of studies out there that back it up that, you know, night shift shortens your life and it's not good for your health and all those, all those things. But sometimes it's something you have to do. Someone's got to work night shift. Someone has to take care of patients at night. So let's try to make the best of it and the most of it and get through it together sort of thing. First of all, I wanted to talk about my night shift must-haves. These are the things that I could not get through a shift without or get through night sleeping without. Number one, an eye mask or blackout curtains or both. I cannot sleep if there's a lick of sun coming through the window, I will not be sleeping. Daylight, especially I, for lots of people, it messes with your circadian rhythm. And of course, night shift messes with your circadian rhythm. So if there's sunlight coming through, your body's gonna be like, oh hey, like let's wake up, it's daytime, get this party started. And if you use blackout curtains and you get some good ones, you won't see a lick of sun. And it's amazing. And you'll think it's pitch black outside when it's bright and sunny and 75. Like, you have no idea. I also have an eye mask. I normally, <laughs> so I keep it on like 75% of the night. I never thought I was an eye mask person, but I really like the one I have. It's from Love Night Shift. And it has like, my mom wears an eye mask every night. And she said this was a really good one because it lets you move your eyeballs. Like it has, instead of it just being flat, it has like indentations for your eyes 
it sounds really weird, <laughs> but it gives you space so it's not pressed up against your face sort of thing. And I really like it. I will rip it off sometimes in my sleep. I don't always keep it on, but for my naps, it's super helpful. I love that because we don't have blackout curtains at our apartment that we're staying at right now. So it's nice because I can still make it pitch black. Like Brandon, I don't understand that man. He can sleep through whatever. It can be loud as can be. It can be as bright as can be. He has no problem. I am not the same. So I really need that. <laughs> also, something I really couldn't live without is melatonin. There's so many different brands. Some people I know take Benadryl, some take like Unisum. There's so many different sleep aids that you can take, but I have found melatonin to be so helpful to me. I have used the Ollie melatonin sleep gummies and those knock me out. Um, Tiki Bev, which is a nurse founded company, she has like a little liquid water enhancer. You just like put a squeeze in your water with melatonin and I think there's like chamomile and other things in it that really helps me out. Um, Drink Bed Babe, I've had those. Those are really helpful as well. Anything that works for you. Obviously what works for me might not work for you. So trial and error is your friend. Like try different mel melatonins, try different sleep aids, but something that is going to help you sleep during the day because that's super hard. You might get off work and be exhausted, but your body will wake you up two hours later because it's not used to it yet. So I will drink something or take a sleep gummy or whatever before I go to bed. And I normally will get six hours plus of sleep, no problem, won't wake up much. Because if you're not getting that good quality sleep, you're not going to function very well. It's very, very hard to run on zero, little to no sleep at all. So don't feel like you can't use melatonin and things like that. Obviously, like if you're very sensitive to it, don't take too much because I don't want you to be groggy. Like that is never fun, waking up and being groggy or you know, being at work and being groggy is not very safe. <laughs> so you know, figure out what works for you. If you're really sensitive, start out small and slow with a little bit. I don't take much. I genuinely do not take much. I'll drink like half of the drink bed babe or just a little squeeze. And I think the gummies from Ollie, the serving size is technically two gummies and I only take one. So I'm pretty sensitive to it and I know that. So I watch it. <laughs> But if you're not, you know, take, take whatever you need to take, but let, use your resources. If you really can't sleep, like take some melatonin. It's okay. I promise you. Another thing that I really could not live without is caffeine. I know some people don't drink caffeine. I know some people don't need caffeine. I am not one of those people. Okay. <laughs> I, every single night, halfway through my shift, it's like my little treat, unless I'm so stinking busy that I don't think of it or don't even have time to do it, I will drink an energy drink halfway through my shift. And I will drink a Nalani New, that's my drink of choice. And <laughs> I drink it around one and look forward to it every night. Like it's like, it's my little reward, you know? <laughs> and it helps me push through because at that point, I'm not normally really tired at 1 a.m., but when 5 a.m., three to five are like the hardest hours that most people complain about on nights it hits you. You're like, oh my gosh, I've been up all night. I'm tired. I need to go to bed. Like that's when it hits you. So <laughs> if I don't drink it, I find myself barely being able to get through like that slump. But if I drink it, I'm normally fine and I will be perfectly tired by the time I get home. Another thing is I always eat breakfast or whatever you want to call it. It's technically dinner <laughs> after your night. If I don't eat something before I go to bed, I will wake up in the middle of the day hungry. And I know tons of people do this and I try to eat something with that's pretty balanced, good protein, healthy fats and fiber. Like that will keep me full the whole time or else your body naturally is used to eating during the day. And eating is a whole nother ballpark. Like I remember when I first started nights, I was like, when do you eat? When, when do you eat? When do you sleep? How do you function? Like I genuinely was so nervous <laughs> before my first night shift. I was asking everyone like, what do you do? How do you get through it? I watched so many videos and I was really nervous about it. Like I was genuinely super stressed. So let me tell you what I figured out through the years of working nights. So what I do when I'm trying to transition to my first night of the week, I will wake up early. 
which I hate waking up early. I'm not a morning person. I will set 15 alarms to make sure my butt is out of bed by seven. Sometimes it's not, sometimes it's more like 7.30, but I really, really, really try to get up early that day, the day I'm working. Let's say I work tomorrow. I do work tomorrow. <laughs> so I will wake up at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning and I will wake up, I will do something around the house, I'll probably eat some breakfast, clean, do laundry, be productive, I'll go to the gym, I'll take the dogs on a walk, I'll do things on my to-do list that I need to get done so I don't feel like I'm wasting my whole day away. And I typically go to the gym and take the dogs on a walk right before, like probably around 10, 10 to 11, and I'll get home, I'll shower, wind down, read a little bit, or watch a TV show and try to take a nap at noon. I'll try to sleep three hours is like the least I need. Three hours, I'll, I'll wake up at three if I have to. Sometimes I'll wake up at 2.30 just because I can't sleep. But I say even if you can't take a nap, at least try to rest. Because resting your eyes and just laying there, being comfortable, closing your eyes, not being on your phone, just laying there really, really helps. And think happy thoughts. Like I will take sometimes if I'm not tired, I will take a half of a half dose that I normally take of melatonin just to kind of get a nap through. But some people can't do that because you'll be too groggy. So don't do it if you feel like you'll be too groggy. But also, I will not take any pre-workout pre or drink any caffeine that day, which is really, really hard for me waking up at 7 a.m. and not being able to have a cup of coffee or not drinking pre-workout before my workout. But if I did that, there's no way in heck I would take a nap. Like I never thought I was a nap person. I genuinely said to everyone, I am not a nap person, I can't nap, like naps are not my thing. But you have to, you have to. <laughs> if you're going to do this method, you have to take a nap. And I know that this works for so, so, so many people and I genuinely think it works so well for me because I still am able to enjoy some of that day. I, I don't, I don't like, some people do the method where you stay up the night before as long as you can. So I would stay up tonight as long as I could and try to sleep in, but I would wake up. I would wake up at a normal time around nine and then I stayed up all night, I'm short on sleep and I have to work that night. Like that method does not work for me. Obviously, again, what works for me might not work for you. So figure out what works for you, try a few methods, but I genuinely know most people find that the method I use works really well for them. So then I will take my nap. I normally try to get up at 4.30 anyway. So if I wake up at 3.30 naturally, I'll get up because if I find myself like trying to go back to sleep and then waking up again to an alarm, I will be groggy. If my body wakes me up naturally, I'll get up sort of thing. So I get up, I have my coffee then finally, <laughs> I've like been waiting all day for this and I We'll just do some things around the house, make my lunch, get ready, like have a slow morning before work sort of thing, even though it's afternoon slash night. But I prefer having like a slow, like not feeling rushed getting ready because if I'm rushed, I'm stressed, I have anxiety, like that is not a good mindset for me going into work. So if I had one tip, it's allow yourself enough time. But don't allow yourself too much time because a lot of people get pre-shift anxiety if you're just sitting around doing nothing. Like if you were ready an hour beforehand, like don't do that. But allow yourself enough time so it's not rushed, you can enjoy it. Like watch, I sometimes will watch a YouTube video or you know, scroll on TikTok and read some of my book. Like enjoy it, you know? It doesn't have to be super duper stressful if you don't make it that way sort of thing. So then I'll go to work and I will make a protein shake or eat something before I leave for work. I'll try to eat something big just in case I don't have time to eat for a long time at work because normally like 7 to 2 a.m. is the busiest time for us and you're running your booty off. So sometimes you can't eat. <laughs> so I try to make sure I have a big enough meal that'll, even if I'm not hungry, like sometimes I'm really not hungry, but I'll try to have something in my stomach that will fulfill me just in case I won't be able to eat for a while. I will work that whole night. I'll have my Alani halfway through and then I will get home in the morning. I am always pretty tired in the morning. After I shower, I will be like, okay, I'm ready for bed. Some people I know will stay up for a few hours. I'm not one of those people. <laughs> I like to get in bed as soon as I can because I would rather have more time in the afternoon than in the morning sort of thing. So I'll wake up earlier instead of staying up later. 
and I will shower right when I get home. I mean, I walk in the door, I wipe my phone, I wipe my Apple Watch band, and I take my scrubs off and get in the shower. Like, first thing I do, get these germs off of me, get these gross scrubs off of me. <laughs> like, I don't wanna bring these germs in my house, and I need to be clean sort of thing. So I will do that, and then I will drink my melatonin drink or take the Ollie Sleep Gummy, whatever I'm using for melatonin that day and then I will try to relax. So, oh, and eat something, obviously. Like I said, I try to eat a big, nice, healthy, protein, fat, fiber meal to keep me full, because if I don't, I will be starving later. So you have to eat something, I'm telling you. Um, I also don't drink anything after 5 a.m., so two hours before your shift ends. I would say to cut off water and liquids because you might have to wake up and go to the bathroom in the middle of your sleep. So I prefer not to drink anything because I have found that I will wake up having to go to the bathroom. But <laughs> not everyone knows that. I also say no caffeine after 3 a.m. So like five hours before you're going to sleep, I would say cut it off. But not everyone is super sensitive to caffeine. So evaluate yourself, what you need. But I find if I drink caffeine later in the shift, I will not sleep. Thank you. But the funny thing is, I feel like I'm not very caffeine sensitive regularly. Like during the day, I can drink coffee right now at like 9 o'clock and I can go to bed an hour later, no problem. But I, it's something about night shift, okay? And then you just repeat it all over again. So I find if I have a nice big meal and a melatonin drink or some sort of sleep supplement, I will sleep all day, no problem. And I'll wake up maybe a couple of times, like just tossing and turning, but I will have good REM sleep, feel, feel full of energy when I wake up around three or four. And again, if I wake up naturally, I will get up as long as I've gotten a good six to seven hours because I will be groggy if I don't. And listen to your body. The whole thing I think, that I neglected the first time I did nights is I didn't listen to my body. Your body tells you what it needs, like with eating too. So I get so, so, so many questions about eating, when to eat during your night shift, when to eat, you know, on your days off, like listen to your body. I say big meal before your shift, big meal after your shift at least. Obviously you wanna eat three big meals a day, you know, get your snacks and get, get your calorie needs and nutrition needs. I'm not a nutritionist, but get, get your needs that you normally would be needing every single day. But I would say, you know, especially if you're super busy and you find yourself working all night and not eating, try to get something big or a good sufficient meal in before and after your shift at least. Because I have those days all the time and I am starving and I feel like dizzy. I don't feel good. You're low on energy. You need to eat. And it's really hard sometimes to eat on night shift because you might not feel hungry or you might have night shift nausea, it's, which is definitely a thing. I have that all the time. <laughs> but listen to your body. Your body will tell you when it's hungry. Sometimes smaller meals are better. Sometimes bigger meals are better. But I prefer to always pack a few snacks with me to, if I get hungry, to just grab and snack on really quick if I can, if I'm super duper busy sort of thing. But the big thing is just listen to your body. Your body will tell you when it's hungry. Don't feel like you need to eat at this time, this time, and this time. And again, what works for me might not work for you, but listen to your hunger cues. If your body is hungry, eat. Don't think you can't eat because it's the middle of the night. Yes, the first few weeks your digestion might not be the best and maybe you need to take a supplement or something like that to help you digest a little better because your body's like, hey, what the heck is going on? But I, I really sincerely think that your body starts to adjust the more you work nights. So everyone does it differently, but that's what I do. And I highly, highly recommend it. I also really recommend meal prepping and meal prepping has saved me so much. I'll make protein pancakes and sausage and like fruit for breakfast or overnight protein, overnight oats, like have something sufficient a few days ahead of time. And that's something I'll do sometimes like tomorrow morning before I work, I might meal prep. And that saves you so much time because you'll be tired. So I find meal prepping really helps me to fuel my body through my shifts. So I love overnight oats. 
I will sometimes make like a protein shake ahead of time and put it in like a blender bottle and bring it to work to drink later. That's another easy thing that I can chug real quick at the nurse's station if I don't have time to warm up something and I'm really, really hungry and need, need some energy. So that is always really helpful. I would do that all the time when I was a new nurse. But find what works for you. Find some good, quick and easy, healthy meals that you will actually eat and enjoy. Like I will DoorDash and Uber eat stuff all the time. I'm, I'll keep it real with you. <laughs> but you know, it's the thought that counts. <laughs> I know a lot of people love meal prepping. I love meal prepping. It's just sometimes I don't always eat it during my shift because my body's like, eh, I don't really want that right now. I would rather have something from DoorDash. And you know what? I listen to my body. Another essential that I have is the hatch, which do I think you need to spend over $100 on an alarm clock? No. Ours is named Lula. We named her Lula, like lullaby, like, I don't know, came out a lullaby. <laughs> and I got this again from my brother, thank you Nick. I'm so appreciative. <laughs> I love it, I use it every night. Don't think I would've purchased her with my own money though. I find it hard to justify spending that type of money on an alarm clock. But now that I have it, I absolutely love it. And I can make like a no more in-depth video about it, but Basically, it has like multiple different settings. There is an in-app subscription if you want to get it. I don't personally have it because I don't feel like I need it. But my settings that I have it on are, the first setting is a 30 minute like reading timer and I have it on a red light but you can change the color. And then my second setting is a 10 minute meditation. And then the third setting is the white noise. And then you can set it to slowly wake you up as a sunrise whatever and you can choose the color you can choose the sound and it gradually wakes you up so it's not like that siren ur, 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 like apple sound that wakes you up and it slowly wakes you up so it's supposed to not like get you right out of that REM sleep you know what I'm saying so I really enjoy it especially because like when I live in Michigan even on day shift like it's dark when I wake up it's dark when I go to bed like it's nice to wake up to sun, whether it's fake or real. <laughs> I feel like it makes a big difference, but there are a bunch of dupes. I have one on my Amazon storefront. Um, I think it's under like night shift faves. I ha don't have it, but it has really good reviews and it's a lot cheaper. So maybe start out with that, see if you like that and then work your way up if you want to. I mean, it's definitely an investment. I really like it, but again, like it's hard for me to justify <laughs> spending that type of money on an alarm clock. But I use it every night. And I used to not be, like I used to be a silent sleeper and <laughs> no fan, nothing, like complete silence. And now I can't sleep without Lula and her white noise. Like <laughs> I can't imagine sleeping without it. I wanted to talk about flipping on my days off. So to flip on my days off, I'll get home. I won't drink a melatonin or take a melatonin drink or anything like that. And I will go to sleep and then I will try to wake up around one or two, depending on when I go to sleep, and I'll have a cup of coffee, just one, nothing crazy, like a small amount of caffeine to just get me going. And then normally, I'm like, if I'm up for eight hours, I find that like, I can be up for eight hours and then be tired again. So I will get up and go to the gym and do whatever I wanna do that day. Sometimes I'll wake up earlier if I have other things going on, but I try to give myself rest and enough sleep, and I tend to be able to go to bed start feeling a little groggy and tired around 11 and sometimes I don't fall asleep until midnight but I will take a melatonin as well that night that way I sleep through the whole night and normally I wake up pretty early the next morning and get a full night's rest that's what works for me I the first round of nights that I did I could not figure out a good system I would sleep too long I would sleep too little I wouldn't be able to sleep consistently throughout the night if I don't take melatonin that night I typically won't sleep throughout the night so my first few nights Flipping back, if I have a few nights off, I will take melatonin, but normally by like the third night, I won't have to take anything and I can sleep no problem. You guys asked me some questions on my Instagram story, which if you're not following, make sure to follow Brie Brie the Nurse and at Scrubs Off Duty Pod on Instagram and TikTok and Lemon 8. You guys, what is Lemon 8? I started posting on it. I feel like I'm not aesthetic enough. <laughs> like I, I just, am, I will never be an aesthetic girly like that, but 
I share my, my faves and stuff like that, so go follow me there <laughs> at Brie Brie the Nurse on Lemonade if you want to. I'll post like book recommendations and skincare stuff and hairstyles, you know, my usual things. But let's go over the questions you guys asked me. Tips for night shift anxiety. I've been doing the nights for five years, but have anxiety worse at night. So that's really interesting for me because I'm the opposite. I tend to have more anxiety I've noticed when I work day shift. When I work night shift, if I don't have a rushed, like, get ready with me before work, I feel good. Um, maybe you're giving yourself too much time to get ready. Maybe you're not giving yourself enough time to get ready and you're feeling rushed and that's stressing you out more. But I also think lack of sleep plays a big role in your mood and anxiety and stuff like that. So maybe make sure you're getting enough sleep. It's really hard for me to speak on this since I don't experience it myself. But maybe it's time for a shift change or a job change, you know, evaluate if it's a healthy amount of anxiety or not, because sometimes it's just, it, it, you need an environment change as well. Do you prefer night shift or day shift? I prefer the vibe of night shift, if you know, you know, but I prefer the regular hours of day shift, I would say. But sometimes I like night shift because I feel like I get more time because I can experience the day before and the day after sort of thing but sometimes you lose time too so it kind of just depends on how your schedule is do you and brandon work the same days we try to but we don't always unfortunately but it is really nice going through night shift with a buddy how is it staying not sick it is so good i am so so thankful that i've been healthy like it has truly made the biggest difference in my happiness and my quality of life with work and out of work because it's exhausting being sick and I, my heart goes out to everyone with chronic illnesses. I mean, I was spending a lot of time with the doctor and didn't really get answers. I still had appointments to go to, but had to cancel them because I was like, you know what? <laughs> We're going to Arizona and I'm travel nursing. Like I'm not, <laughs> I, I sh will follow up when I get back home. I, you know, nurses make the worst patients. Okay. <laughs> We're not going to talk about it, but I am so, so, so thankful for my health right now. And that, yeah, that's, that, that sums it up. Do you recommend night shift over days as a new grad in the ED? So I think night shift and day shift in the ER definitely see their different things. Like night shift, I feel like you can see a lot of more like ETOH, some more violence acts and stuff like that. And day shift, it's more like car accidents and stuff like that from what I've noticed where I worked. And it tends to be super busy at the end of your shift if you're on day shift and super busy at the beginning of your shift if you're on night shift and then it unwinds as you go on. But day shift is kind of a little slower in the morning when people aren't always up and then it gets busier obviously as people wake up. I think it really just depends on your support and how you feel like you can function on those shifts. I think either are doable and maybe nights might be a little bit slower but sometimes it's not. So I know some people say like nights are slow. Maybe if it's like a different unit, it might be a little slower, but sometimes in the ER, it's just as busy, if not more, because you have limited resources. A lot of the times you don't have the same resources as you have on day shift. So it can be a lot harder because of that and make things a lot busier. So I think maybe work both, see what you like more, but I don't think there's a, a set strict or a set shift for new grads. Like I think you gotta do, you gotta do you boo, gotta do what's best for you and evaluate like which works. How did you prepare yourself when you started? I start nights in two weeks. So I prepared myself by watching lots of videos, asking all my coworkers what they did because everyone kind of does things differently and you gotta figure out what works for you because you know, my coworker might function well off of two hours of sleep, but gosh, if I don't get a full seven hours, you don't want to be around me. Like, and that is the honest truth. I am not my best self when I'm sleep deprived. And I think a lot of people can be like that as well. So I think asking everyone what they do and, you know, figuring out, do I like this? Does this work for me? How do I feel? And the first month I would say is the hardest when you're trying to get the gist of it, trying to see like, you know, can I function off of this schedule? Is my mental health okay? Is my physical health okay? Am I exhausted halfway through my shift? Like, how do I feel the best? And evaluate how much sleep you need as a person and what type of sleeper you are and, you know, get, and I, I got the blackout curtains. I got sunglasses for my drive home. 
I got my favorite, I stocked up on all my caffeine. Like I prepared with all those things that everyone tells you you need. You know, get a sound machine too. That's another necessity. It might not have to be the hatch alarm clock. There are super cheap sound machines out there, but blocking out those noises because you're gonna wake up and be like, oh my gosh, why is it so dang loud outside? Everyone is outside their mowing their lawn, there's construction on the house next door, like cars driving by. Unless you live in the middle of nowhere, you're gonna hear so many noises that you've never even noticed before. So if you have a sound machine, I truly think it makes a big difference in drowning those out. So get all your necessities, maybe practice a minute or two, but I don't think you need to and just give yourself grace, be patient, don't give up right away because it takes time to figure out how to function the best. Do you recommend going straight to bed or staying up for a few hours? Personally, I like I like going straight to bed. Staying up for a few hours, I'm exhausted, I'm cranky, and I listen to my body and I'm like, okay, I'm tired, like I need to go to bed. I feel like if I stay up a few hours, I don't sleep as well and I flip like way more because you're really just throwing your whole body off. I feel like going to bed as soon as you can is the best for me. I mean, there were times that I would have to go to an appointment or we would go out for like night shift breakfast and I wouldn't get to bed until 10 or later, but I truly feel exhausted during those few hours and you've been up for how long at that point. So I don't like doing it that way, but other people love doing that. They'll go to the gym after, they'll get a few things done or you know, they have to go pick up their kids. Like there's other life obstacles. I don't have those obstacles currently. So I can, I just have to worry about myself and my dog sort of thing. <laughs> and obviously Brandon, but he's, he's his own person, but you know what I mean? <laughs> so I, I go to bed and I would rather wake up earlier than stay up late. But that's just me. So figure out what you like. I always say like the more sleep you can get, the better. Because the longer you stay up, if you're taking the risk of, you know, obviously you'll go to bed at 10 or whatever, but you might wake up 18 different times during that and not get good sleep. But if I go to bed at eight and I wake up 18 different times, I have a few more hours in there potentially. So that's my, my way of doing things. Do you have a favorite meal that you eat on night shift? I would say my favorite meal currently, I go through phases of favorite meals. My favorite meal currently is the Thin Mint protein shake that I make that it's the, it's just, it's super easy too. It's almond milk, it's like a quarter of a banana. It's a spoonful of the Thin Mint like almond butter and then a scoop of the Thin Mint protein from Clean Simple Eats, which I also have linked in my bio as well and it is so stinking good. It tastes amazing. Like it tastes like a shamrock shake and it keeps me full because it has, you know, it's pretty balanced and I can slurp it down really quick if I need to because I'm running around like a lunatic. So <laughs> that's my favorite just because it's, and it takes me 30 seconds to make. I throw everything in a blender. I love convenient meals like that. I prefer convenience over anything and it, there's nothing better than something nutritious that's convenient and you know, you make it home so you're saving money sort of thing. So I love that. Okay, towards the end of the episodes, I always just like give a little life update, talk about what's going on, my recent favorites, stuff like that. And <laughs> because there's more to life than just being a nurse, but I hope you enjoyed all my night shift tips. If you don't wanna keep watching and like hearing about random things, don't feel like you have to. But little work-life balance always benefits everyone. So here's my work-life balance segment of the podcast. So recently things I've done, I just finished Outer Banks, the season three. So if you don't wanna hear any spoilers, if you haven't watched it, don't listen. But the last episode, I was kind of disappointed, you guys. Like genuinely, I feel like it fast forwarded to however long, like a year and a half later or whatever. But I, I wanted to hear more, like how did they get the rest of the gold? Like what happened? And then they're just having this random celebration for them and like, this random guy comes up to them. I don't know. Like I know it gave the quick little life updates, but I was, I wanted more that it was all built up to them getting the gold. And then you don't even see the like legitimacy of how they get it and the rest of it and get the money from it and all that. Like I wanted more. I need answers. I have questions, <laughs> but it was really good. I love Outer Banks. I know not everyone does, but I'm a sucker for Outer Banks. I also just finished if he had been with me, that's a book that I was reading. And I gave it like a four and a half out of five stars. I liked it, I didn't cry, which a lot of people said they sobbed their eyes out. So again, I feel really heartless.
that I didn't cry. But it was good. It was genuinely a good book. I feel like it kind of dragged on a little bit. I think there is going to be a second book though and I'm kind of interested because I heard it's from Finney's perspective, the other character, and I really wanted to see that. I do like the way it was written. It like kind of, it has the ending at the beginning and then goes to the storyline and then goes back to the ending. There's a word for that. It's not foreshadowing, is it? I'm like so rusty on all my English. English used to be my best and favorite subject. Like I excelled in English class. Like it, it was great. I loved it. I looked forward to it. I was such a good writer and now I like don't write anything. I write nurses notes and that's it. And like, <laughs> that's why I really truly feel like I enjoy reading too, because I'm getting that sense of writing and like, not that I write it, but you know what I mean? Like I'm getting that fulfillment of that English nerd in me. <laughs> um, I went to Florida this last week and it was so great. I got to see my mom and my dad, my three nieces and my brother and sister-in-law. And my uh, best friend from home, Trish, she works at Disney. I went and visited her in December and she drove and saw us as well. So it was really nice to catch up with like all my loved ones and get like a piece of home fulfilled because I, as much as I love travel nursing and as much as I love Arizona and being with Brandon and the dogs here, like I am such a family person and I miss my family more than anything. And I wish my other siblings and nieces and nephew could have been there too, but it was just good to get like a little piece of home fulfilled in me and see everyone. And so I swam in the Gulf, like got some beach time, which I don't really love the beach too much. Fun fact, I like hate sand. I can't stand sand. It gets everywhere, it's so messy. But I love swimming in the lake, like I love swimming in oceans. I just like, if you could just drop me off in the middle, like on a boat, I'll be fine, but like, don't let me touch the sand. <laughs> I don't know why it's, it's ugh, like getting the heebie-jeebies thinking about it. But got lots of sun, swam in the pool, hung out with my nieces, which was so nice to see them. They're getting so big, it like melts my heart. I love being an aunt, like genuinely it's one of my favorite things in the world, my nieces and my nephew. I have five nieces, is that right? Five, yeah, five nieces and one nephew and it's just like never stopping. So, so much love from them, they just melt my heart. It's so cute watching them grow up, like I, I can't. They're growing up way too fast, especially when I don't get to see them for a few months. I see them and they're like walking and talking and I'm like, what? Where, you were just a baby. Like, I, I can't, I can't handle it. <laughs> but it was so nice. I always was worried that I wasn't going to get adequate time off as a travel nurse because you know, you think you get like the crappy schedule and don't really get a say in those things. And yes, like there are times when you probably don't get the best schedule, but I was able to make it work and switch around with some people and it was so good to be able to see them. I was very sleep deprived. <laughs> I worked night shift, came home, showered, grabbed my suitcase and went straight to the airport. And then my flight, I flew into O'Hare, which is in Chicago or Illinois. Um, and I flew into O'Hare and that plane was horrible. It was horrible. I was pressed up against the window. I swear to you, the, the air wasn't working. It was hot as could be. I was diaphoretic <laughs> and I was so nauseous. I never get nauseous on planes like that, but I genuinely thought I was going to throw up. And I was in the window seat. I didn't know the two people next to me. The guy next to me kept elbowing me and I was like, oh my gosh. And it was like being on the Tower of Terror. Like I'm telling you, the plane was like, whoop, 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 like up and down, up and down. And I was sleep deprived. I hadn't slept at all. I was trying, I was banking on taking a nap. It was like a four something hour flight. Like I was like, oh, perfect. I'll get a nice little stretch, stretch, stretch of sleep in and I'll be fine. But no, absolutely not. I was not fine. It was horrible, horrible, I'm telling you. But then my next flight was a lot better from Chicago to Tampa. So <laughs> thank goodness. But I didn't get there because of the time change. You lose three hours going to Florida from Arizona. And so I didn't get there until like 11 o'clock. So it was just a long full day of traveling. And, but it was, it was so worth it to wake up and see my nieces. And they were obviously sleeping when I got there. So it was so fun. And I'm just so thankful that I was able to do it. And it's just, you know, it was, it was a misconception that I wasn't able to travel. That's something I learned. Like you can make it work. You can still do things like 
it's great. Some things I've been loving recently, the Youth to the People face wash. I absolutely love it so much. I think it's my new favorite face wash. I've always seen people post about it. I should have brought it so you guys could see it, but it's a green glass bottle, which like a glass bottle kind of intimidates me. I feel like I shouldn't be allowed to have a glass bottle of anything. I break stuff. I'm so clumsy. Uh, it, but I haven't broken it yet. Not gonna lie, but it gets so foamy. I absolutely love it. And I've also been loving the glass skin serum, I think is what it's called, from Peach and Lily. Like you wanna talk about glass skin, oh my gosh, it's amazing. I also set up Brandon, <laughs> he's so cute. He had, was like, I wanna get into skincare, you know, like trying to, and he sees me do my skincare, I'm very big about skincare, he sees me do it twice a day, and so I was like, you know what, like I have, you know, some extras of things, and we can make your little step routine, and he was so cute, he was like, wait, which one goes first? <laughs> I gave him like a, a moisturizer, a serum, an eye cream, and SPF, and a face wash, so like a nice, like pretty much the basics, all you need, a five-step routine like that, and it's so cute watching him, he's like, am I doing this right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, babe, <laughs> you're doing good, I'm so proud of you, <laughs> and he's like, wow, this like, I feel really good. I feel like I'm ready to start my day. I'm like, yeah, skincare is great. Like I love, I look forward to doing it. It's my little me time. It's just cute seeing that like he loves it too. <laughs> Another thing I have been loving is going outside until this week. <laughs> it has been a hundred in Arizona this week and I'm like a Midwest Michigan girly. Like it typically doesn't go above 90. Like 90 is like the hottest it gets and it's very rare. It'll be like 85 average hot in Michigan. And granted it's humidity, but everyone's like, oh, it's a dry heat. It's not that bad. And I'm like, what? I, I walked outside and I was like, I am in an oven. And it's supposed to get up to 130 here. Like, thank goodness I'm not staying for the summer because I genuinely think I would melt. <laughs> like it is, I can't even describe to you how warm it is. And I was talking to everyone at work about it and they're like, yeah, like some people, you'll see people wearing oven mitts when they're driving. Like if you stand on the asphalt for too long the bottom of your shoe will start melting. And I'm like, you guys are kidding me. No way. Like you have got to be lying. <laughs> Seriously? Like BFFR, okay? <laughs> So that's why we're, as much as we would like love to extend and love it here, I know personally I cannot handle the heat when it gets that hot. Like 100 has been rough for me this last week. We have gone outside, we'll sit in the shade and it's tolerable in the shade, but I'm still like dripping in sweat. But I'm naturally just like a sweaty person at baseline <laughs> in the heat and like that's pretty hot. But I cannot do 130 degrees. There's no freaking way. No way, Jose. I'm currently reading a not so meat cute and I really like it so far. I'm like 25% of the way through and it's cute. I, I like the story. It's very like easy to follow and easy to read. I'm reading it on my Kindle and my next book, I wanted to read that one mystery book but they didn't have it on Kindle Unlimited and I'm really trying not to buy books because I just bought a book the last time I went to Sam's and when I was at Sam's this last time as well, I was like looking at all of them and I'm like, oh, this is on my to be read list. This is on my to be read list. Like, but I, I can't get all this stuff home. I'm going to have to rent a U-Haul to drive all this home. Like I'm telling you, it's a problem. <laughs> but I've been loving reading that. So hopefully by next week I'll be done with it and start it on a new book. But there's nothing better than like sitting outside and reading a good book and it's I've been able to do that this whole time in Arizona and I think that's truly why I've been reading so much more because I can get outside and read and I love it it's so relaxing the girls got a haircut this last Tuesday and it was so nerve-wracking for me because they when they get haircuts that can be really rough sometimes and they've gone to the same groomer for a while now they've got it down pat good haircuts every time and belly <laughs> came out a little shaved and her ears were really long like below her chin long and granted they give them blowouts and I don't really like the blowout look it obviously stops after a few days when their curls start coming back in because they're naturally both curly belly's a little bit more wavy but I had to cut her ears and cut her face because her face was like huge compared to her body she was like shaved on her body and her face was like 
looked like anaphylactic shock, swollen. Like, I'm like, girl, what happened? <laughs> and they were like, oh, they were so good. And it took them five hours. I was like, five hours? There's no way they were good if it took five hours. Like my other groomer, it takes an hour and a half tops. And I was like, okay, just be, be honest. Were they naughty? <laughs> and the they said that Belly was a little grumpy. And I was like, what does that mean, grumpy? Like, did she bite you or something? <laughs> and they never, they never said. They're like, oh no, she was just a little grumpy. I'm like, oh geez, like now I'm so embarrassed and I feel like I have to find another new groomer. <laughs> My dog was grumpy, what does that mean? You know? <laughs> but I, the, their hair will grow back. It's nice and fresh now for the summer, summer cut. Nice, nice, nice and breezy. But those are my little life updates. As always, make sure you like, comment, subscribe to my podcast, watch on YouTube, follow on Instagram and TikTok, and let me know any feedback, if there's anyone you want on here, if you like this episode, what you want me to talk about, and thank you so, so, so much for listening. I appreciate it more than you know. I hope you have a good day. I'm manifesting a good shift for you.